from the University of British Columbia and Martin Ordonez, and this is Power Electronics. Today, we're going to talk about the back boost topology, and we have an invited speaker who's going to introduce the topic. Hi, my name is Ignacio Galeano Sobrigan, and I'm a researcher at UBC. Today, we're going to be talking about the backpost converter, which is one of the fundamental topologies in power electronics and can generate a negative voltage starting from a DC input voltage. Let's get started. The backpost converter is a switch topology that takes a DC input voltage V in and transforms it into a DC output voltage V out which has reverse polarity when compared to the input voltage. The output voltage can be smaller, equal or larger than the input voltage, but its polarity is always negative respect to the input ground. The circuit takes the input voltage source and uses two complementary switches, S1 and S2, to alternatively connect either the input by closing S1 and opening S2, or the output by opening S1 and closing S2 to the inductor L, which by interacting with the capacitor C, produces a DC output voltage V out with reverse polarity, which is applied to the load. In an asynchronous back boost converter, the switch S2 is implemented using a diode, which will automatically turn on when the switch S1 implemented with a controllable switch, such as a MOSFET or IGBT, is turned off. In the synchronous back boost converter, the diode is replaced by another controllable switch, driven by a complementary signal. This modification provides additional regulation features when compared with the asynchronous topology. In order to maintain these regulation capabilities, the asynchronous back boost converter can be designed to operate in continuous conduction mode. That is, the operating range is selected to continuously guarantee a positive current through the inductor, which ensures the diode is always forward biased and able to carry the current. If this condition is not met, the equations that describe the behavior of the converter will change. This switch topology under continuous conduction mode has two different states. When the control signal S is high, the controllable switch S1 is turned on and connects the input voltage to the inductor, creating a current flow. This is maintained during a period of time called on time, T on, after which the control signal S changes to a low state which causes the switch S1 to turn off and forces the diode to carry the inductor current. This is maintained during a period of time called off time, T off. This cycle of T on followed by T off repeats continuously with the circuit alternating between its on and off states. The sum of one on time and one off time is called switching period and its reciprocal is called the switching frequency one of the fundamental parameters of the converter. The ratio between the on time T on and the switching period T is called duty cycle D. The off time can then be found as one minus D times the switching period T. The input to output voltage ratio found in a back boost converter during steady state can be determined by examining the voltage across the terminals of the inductor. In on state, when the switch S1 is closed, the input voltage is directly applied to the inductor and maintained until the end of the on time, when the switch S1 is turned off. During the off period, the diode connects the inductor to the output voltage, which has a reverse polarity respect to the input ground. This voltage is maintained until the end of the switching period when the switching sequence is restarted. In steady state, the voltage balance principle requires the integral of the inductor voltage to be zero over a switching period. This means that the area below the voltage curve is equal to zero. 
Expanding the integral for the on and off times, and considering the voltage is constant during these times, the integral becomes the product of the on state voltage V in times the on time minus V o times the off time, representing T on and T off as a function of the switching period and duty cycle, leaves the equation only as a function of the input and output voltage, the switching period, and the duty cycle. Solving for the duty cycle gives an input to output voltage ratio. Since T can vary between 0 and 1, the voltage at the output can be lower, equal, or higher than the input voltage. The current in the inductor IL can be found as a function of the output current IO, which equals the diode current ID minus the capacitor current IC. The first step to find the inductor current is to consider its average value. In steady state, the average current in the capacitor is zero since there is no net change in the voltage, and the average diode current equals the average inductor current times one minus D since the diode only carries the inductor current during the off time. Therefore, the average output current equals the average inductor current times one minus D, which means the average inductor current equals the average output current determined by the output voltage and resistor over one minus D. The variation in the inductor current around the average value is controlled by the inductor voltage waveform we found previously, and the inductor differential equation, which relates the derivative of IL with the voltage applied to the inductor. During the on time, the input voltage is applied to the inductor. Since this is a positive constant value, the current increases linearly during the on time. When the switch is turned off, the output voltage, which has a reverse polarity, is applied to the inductor. Since this is a constant negative voltage, the inductor current will decrease linearly to the same starting point to start the sequence again. If the inductor equation is integrated during the on time, since the voltage is constant, the amplitude of the inductor current ripple is found to be equal to the voltage during the on time times the length of the on time scaled by the inductor value. Plugging in the value of the inductor voltage during this time, Vn, and the value of the on time, the duty cycle times the switching time, and then replacing the switching time by one over the switching frequency, the amplitude of the inductor current ripple is found as a function of the converter parameters. This equation can be used to find the ripple in the inductor current or it can be arranged to select the inductor value for a given desired current ripple. The voltage in the capacitor VC is equal to the output voltage VO. The mean value of the capacitor voltage is equal to the mean output voltage, and by using the input-to-output relationship, we can see that the average capacitor voltage equals the input voltage times T over 1 minus T. During the on time, the current in the capacitor IC is the exact opposite to the load current. During the off time, the capacitor current equals the inductor current minus the load current. The voltage in the capacitor is related to the capacitor current by the capacitor differential equation. The capacitance times the derivative of the capacitor voltage with respect to time is equal to the current in the capacitor. Since the capacitor current has a constant negative value during the on time, the capacitor voltage decreases linearly. During the off time, the current decreases linearly starting from the inductor current peak minus the load current. Then the capacitor voltage is a concave parabola with a maximum occurring when the capacitor current crosses zero. The derivative is zero. These cycles repeat every switching period with an amplitude of delta V out, which is given by the charge accumulated in the capacitor scaled by the capacitor value. This charge, delta Q, can be approximated by the area below the capacitor current during the on time, which equals 
the on time T on multiplied by the load current IO, representing T on as function of the switching period and duty cycle, replacing the output current by the output voltage divided by the load resistance, and finally replacing the switching period by the switching frequency and the output voltage by the input voltage times the input to output voltage ratio, the expression that approximates the output voltage ripple is then found by rearranging terms. This expression shows the output voltage ripple as a function of the converter parameters and can be also used to size the appropriate capacitor required to maintain a desired level of ripple. Let's analyze a design example to use all the formulas we have just derived. The proposed back boost converter takes an input voltage of 24 volts and converts it to an output voltage with reverse polarity of 12 volts. The switching frequency is 100 kHz and the minimum load resistance, which corresponds to the maximum loading condition, is 1.2 ohms. The maximum ripple allowed in the inductor is 20% of the average inductor current under maximum load, and the maximum ripple in the capacitor voltage is plus or minus 2% of the average output voltage. Consider the input voltage of 24 volts and the output voltage of 12 volt. The desired value for the duty cycle can be obtained from the input to output voltage ratio equation, which indicates the duty cycle must be equal to the output voltage over the sum of input and output voltages. In this case, 12 volts over 12 volts plus 24 volts, which equals 1 over 3, or 0 0.33. The average inductor current at the maximum load condition, 1.2 ohm, is equal to the output current determined by V out and R out over 1 minus D which is 15 ampere. The ripple in the inductor is limited to 20% of the maximum average inductor current. This is 20% of 15 amperes, or 3 ampere. From the equation for the inductor current ripple, solving for the inductor value, and plugging in the known values such as the input voltage, 24 volts, duty cycle, 0 0.33, desired inductor current ripple, 3 ampere, and switching frequency, 100 kHz, gives the required value for the inductor of 24 microhenry. The voltage ripple in the capacitor is limited to plus or minus 2% or 4% in total of the average output voltage, that is 0 0.48 volt. Using the capacitor voltage ripple equation, solving for the capacitor value, and plugging in the known values such as input voltage, 24 volts, duty cycle, 0 0.33, desired output voltage ripple, 0 0.48 volt, switching frequency, 100 kilohertz, and minimum load resistor, 1.2 ohms, gives the required value for the capacitor, 69 microfarad. Since the analysis we have done is valid only for continuous conduction mode, it is important to determine the minimum load necessary to achieve this condition. When the average inductor current decreases due to a higher load resistance, the minimum value of the inductor current will become closer and closer to zero. When the average current is too low, the inductor current will touch zero. This is the boundary of continuous conduction mode, and while all the equations previously derived are still valid at this point, the analysis would lose validity if the load current was further reduced. The boundary of this continuous conduction mode happens when the average inductor current is equal to half of the current ripple, which, in this case, is 1.5 ampere. Using the relationship between the output voltage and the current in the load, the load in the boundary of this continuous conduction mode is found to be 8 ohms. With this, our design is finalized as all the main parameters and waveforms of the asynchronous back boost converter for this example have been found and selected. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We hope it will help you with your upcoming designs. Today, we talked about the back boost topology and we presented a design example. 
If you want to see more videos on Power Electronics, please check our channel.